Hey everybody, it's Rory from ANS Gear and we're looking at a brand new marker from Dai today. This is the Dai Rise CZR. So this is the next version of like the Rise that went to the maxed Rise and now we're at the Rise CZR. So let's go ahead and uh, check out the box real quick. Backside here, what you gonna get there. We'll open it up and see what's inside of it. Do have a little warranty card and then a basic quick start manual. If you want the complete manual, you need to go to die, uh, diepaintball.com and the manuals will be in their manual section right there. But they do not put in a complete manual into the box anymore. This is just a basic how the gun turns on, turns off, how you get the air in and out, you know, basic maintenance, things like that. So there you go. Don't expect a big, fancy, beautiful manual in there. All right, so we'll pull that out. Let's put that in there. And then underneath here, you are gonna get a two-piece 14-inch barrel, obviously colored to match. And it is a 688 bore size on the back. You're gonna get your barrel sleeve, a battery, some grease, parts kit and like they've done in their other markers the o-rings are color coded so that you can easily switch them in and out and then a little bag of o-rings one thing i will tell you about the uh, or sorry bag of o-rings bag of allen keys um, one thing i'll tell you about the o-rings is there are aftermarket o-ring kits out there that are colored they are not the same as the colored o-rings that come in the guns Dai uses their own O-rings and their own colors. So if you find other O-ring companies or other O-ring brands out there that are colored O-rings, they will not match up color-wise. So um, just be aware of that. When it comes to Dai O-rings, use their O-rings. Or if you know the sizing, you can use a, a different O-ring, but as long as it's the right size. All right, onward. So I'm gonna point out really some differences between the CZR and the Max Rise. Um, they are a very similar marker, but you do get some, um, probably one of the best things for me, there's two good things that you want in there, uh, as far as stuff that they've changed that really makes a big difference. The first one is the feed neck. Um, Dai has always done, or for a long time they've done, a feed neck that threads into the body. Now they have switched away from that in the past and now have brought that to this marker as well. So the Dai CZR now has a clamp style feed neck where the, the section of the body, this does not thread down into the marker anymore, the marker body. They've made a, a raised section with a lip on it right there and the feed neck itself, which is now completely composite in the early versions of this, uh, or the uh, the last version, the Maxed Rise, it was an aluminum feed neck that could swivel around the top. It had two separate pieces. Gotten rid of that, went to a composite feed neck with a clamp, but now that just, just snaps right on. We can just push this on here, and it locks over that lip, and then we can tighten it down, which really is the way all feed necks should be now. No more threads. You don't need to, the threads failing or coming apart, you know, Loctite to make the threads uh, seal up. None of that stuff. We've got a lip, we've got a locking feature on there, a clamp, it holds it on there, it's not going anywhere. So I think that's awesome. Um, they've shortened down the front of the gun or they've, they've snubbed the front of the gun off. Used to have these weird angles that came off the front on the old one. They've uh, squared that up on the front. Still using the Hyper 3 style regulator which is tried and true, it's been working forever. Let me make sure that I'm getting this right. Yeah, Hyper 3 um, feed neck, we talked about uh, the, I'm getting things all backwards. Hyper 3 regulator and composite feed neck. So Hyper 3 reg, not a Hyper 3 feed neck, there's no such thing as that. Hyper 3 regulator and a composite feed neck, still using the composite frame, which is what's been on this gun for a long time now. Um, the bolt assembly on the inside is the same as before. So let's pop that out real quick. You guys can see that. And the fusion bolt system is what they call it. Remember when you're pulling these out, this bolt out of here, and this goes for really any die gun that has a 
threaded bolt engine. Um, a lot of the new ones have a, a snap release or a button release. As you unscrew the cap, typically the bolt engine, which is inside of here, does not rotate with the cap. And you'll see that when I pull this out of here, you can see that the cap, which was back here, will rotate independently of the engine housing. And you have to be careful of that when you, if you were just pulling this out, you looked at it, mm, it looks good, and you slid it back in there, the bolt wouldn't function properly because this and this are not tight together. So as you unscrew this to release the bolt, remember that you might be unthreading it from the engine itself, and you'll need to go back and make sure that that stays tight. All right. Let's get the bolt apart. I'll take this one off here. Makes it easier to slide it out. So that's what this looks like here. And that hasn't changed from the early model or the first, I keep saying the early model from last model. But the bolt system works fantastic. So if we're just going for generational change, then there's no really no reason to switch it up. All right. Woo! Hands got a little greasy. We want to make sure that all these parts snug up nicely together and that you don't have this backwards. You can. I don't actually think they'll thread together. Let's try it real quick. I'm curious now. Yeah, you can't thread the. If you put this um, on backwards, it will thread onto the front side right here, but you can't get the bolt cap on there. It doesn't thread in properly. So make sure that the green o ring goes towards the front when you're putting that together. And then this will go right on there. All right. We're going to put that back together. And I don't know how many of these guns I see come in where these back caps are just destroyed by people using the wrong size Allen keys in it. If you use the right size Allen key, which they provide for you, and all you need to do is give it like one complete rotation, I believe, and you can get it out. Yeah. It's all you need, one complete rotation. You don't need to undo it like five or six times. You don't need to put an excessive amount of force on it. When I'm going to tighten it, I'm going around. It wants to stop right there. Give it a little bit of a snug and that's it. You don't need to crank down on it. It's just gonna make it harder to get apart. All right, <clears throat> it does come with the ultralight on off ASA. Talked about the Hyper 3 reg, the composite frame does have the newest generation iPipe as well as uh, as well as the new detent system. So this is the Gen 4 iPipe. This is what comes in the M3 Plus. So this has the latest version of the iPipe, which they've uh, realized can cause a lot of issues inside the guns. So they've redesigned that to um, really help the gun run as smooth and as fantastic as possible. So. Uh, that is a, a great upgrade in these guns moving over to that I-pipe system. Let's take a look inside real quick. Get these screws out of here. All right, let's get this grip frame open. All right, normally our battery would go right here. When you're putting the batteries into this marker, you need to be very uh, sure on the way you put the battery in. It even has a little how to put the battery in sticker right here. When you put the battery in, you do terminals first and then push the back side in. If you do back side first and then try to push the terminals down, you will destroy the terminals on here and break them and ruin your marker. So. Make sure you do terminals first, and then push the battery down into the bottom. All right. 
Uh, let's pop the frame down a little bit. We're not going to take it all the way off. We don't need to pull it all the way down. You guys can see the solenoid inside. It's got their ramp solenoid in there, which didn't change from the last model. But it is a tried and true solenoid that works great for what it is. Now, it is not a super fast shooting marker. I think the max rate of fire that you can get out of these on the, on the manual is, I think, 15 BPS, which I'm not saying is slow. But a lot of you guys out there are like, I want a million balls per second. Doesn't do that. Let me look real quick. Uh, yeah, 15 BPS has semi-auto, NXL, burst, and full auto with the safety first shot, which is the same as it was before. I'm going to drop this down. You can see it. So here's our solenoid assembly right there with our hosing running to the front, the middle, and the back. Same solenoid that was in there before. If you do separate these down, make sure that your eye wiring, when you go to put it back together, does not get crushed or smashed. Otherwise, your eyes will stop working. And then you have to replace them, which nobody likes to replace eyes. So as I put this back together, I'm pushing this back up. I'm looking along here to make sure that the eye wires are not in between the frame and the body so that when I close this down, they are not being pinched inside there. If I was to separate the frame all the way off, I would first unplug the wiring to the board, and then I could pull the frame completely off, um, given that I have disconnected the macro line as well. All right. So this is going to go on here. This one's going to go on here. I think these guns are great guns for people who have already had a paintball marker. They're looking for something to advance a little bit. They don't want to get too overboard with um, gadgets and gizmos that you don't really need. But they want to upgrade to a system that's a little bit more advanced, a spool system, um, maybe something that requires a little bit more maintenance than what they're used to. But they're looking for just a, a different shot feel overall. And I think this is a great stepping stone gun to get to that level. All right, put that on there. We've got our screws, we'll put back in for our frame. Definitely we'll go do some shooting videos with this gun a little bit later. You'll see those get posted up. Uh, that way everybody can get a look at the gun and see how it runs. This is the brand new die Rise CZR comes in I think four or five different colors at the moment. This is the tan olive or I'm sorry the olive tan color. Uh, so check the website for color availability and get one at ansgear.com.